he quit his engineering job in the UK to start a farm in Uganda. I was actually trained to become an engineer and that's what I did for several years, about 13 years in the UK. Livestock is an important source of income for more than 80% of the households in the sub-Saharan Africa. Uganda in particular, more than 50% of the households depend on livestock for their livelihoods. Uh, the goat numbers at the moment are around just under 500. Uh, a year a year or two ago, they were more or less around 200. So goats multiply a lot. Uh, but we are going to run these numbers once we get our, our infrastructure done. Uh, we will exceed a thousand goats here. Rise and shine, Value Farm family. Welcome back to another episode of The Farm. If you're new here, you are most welcome. Please consider subscribing if you haven't already and also turn your notification bells not to miss out on any episodes of The Farm. And of course, to all our returning subscribers, thank you so much. We really appreciate you guys so much. We are so glad, guys. We traveled, I don't know how many kilometers to this district right here. We are in Insinjiro. I'm really super excited to bring for you guys someone who is going to inspire upcoming farmers out there. I also have my co-director right there. He's going to say hello to you guys and also introduce our guest for today. Well, hello everybody. My name is co-director Grafton at Value Farm. Yes, we are definitely at the farm, but not at VF. This is the closest thing we found to VF outside of Champolagoma. <laughs> so this is my good friend Mark. Uh, we've been actually in communication for I would say more than like six to seven months. We've been trying to plan this day but we've been so busy you know at our farm. He's a very busy person himself because there's a lot going on here, a lot to manage. So Mark tell the people something about yourself please. Okay hello. Hello uh, Value Farm community. <laughs> um, welcome uh, Grafton and Tina. Um, so my name is Mark Katatumba. Um, I'm a director at uh, Rech Soche Farm. So Rech Soche has two sites in Mbarara and Isinjiro. Wow. So this one here in Isinjiro is a beef farm. So that's where we have our beef cows and our beef goats. Uh, so here behind me are the goats you can see. So about myself, um, I was actually trained to become an engineer and that's what I did for several years, about 13 years in the UK. Uh, and uh, when I, my, my father grew older, I thought, you know, it's probably time for me to come home and see what's going on. And uh, that's how I got involved in the farming uh, because I realized that uh, it was more rewarding than me finding a desk job in town. Mm. Oh my God, from an engineer to a farmer. Yeah, engineer How did in the your UK. friends react to you transforming and becoming a farmer? <laughs> yeah, so they probably thought I'd gone bananas. <laughs> uh, but I actually knew from uh, what I was at the potential I could see, mm. I knew that was the right decision. Yeah, and uh, right now, uh, the stock at the farm here is, is increasing, it's growing. Uh, the capacity of this place, we intend to have uh, around uh, just under 2,000 heads of cattle. Uh, the cattle we have is Boran, uh, and we are introducing others like Brahman and Wagu. Wagu, wow. the, in the interesting thing with Wagu is it's very expensive meat. It's probably the best meat you can find in the world. Uh, so those who do, you know, processing like yourselves going into, uh, that's what you probably benefit most. Um, and then for goats, goats is the subsidiary. Uh, the goat numbers at the moment are around just under 500. Uh, a, year, a year or two ago, they were more or less around 200. So goats multiply a lot. Uh, but we are going to run these numbers once we get our, our infrastructure done. Uh, we will exceed a thousand goats here. Yeah, because the, the site is very large. Yeah, we are talking about 1,500 acres. Uh, so we can, we can contain all those animals here. Wow, I gotta say that's an incredible introduction, but you literally just blew my mind. <laughs> and for some of our viewers out there, did you just say you're considering bringing in a Wagyu beef to Uganda, Africa, and East Africa? Is that, did I hear that correctly? <laughs> yeah, so we've actually started. So some of our animals here, we moved to our farm in Mbarara, so the heifers. Mm -hmm. 
um, and we've started uh, serving them. So, wow. so we started that this year. So some already we're expecting some wagu animals in end of the end of the year. Yeah. That's incredible. Tina, yeah. what do you have to ask how us? Long, how long did you start this farm? Because most people out there could be asking, like with these numbers of goats, the number of cows that you have here, how long mm. did it take you to have the numbers at the farm? Mm. So this is a family farm. Mm. Uh, we, my parents bought this land uh, probably in the, in, the, in the 70s or 80s, late 70s, early 80s. Um, so it has been going on for around that time. Uh, so it's been quite uh, old, but it has been more like a hobby type thing. Okay. Uh, but now with my involvement has only begun since uh, 2020. Okay. Uh, so it's only three years uh, that we've seriously put the effort in to, to improve what we are doing here. That's amazing, Mark. You know it's an amazing thing you just mentioned. For many of our viewers who's been following us for some time, we always talk about legacy, right? Yeah. You could work on a desk job, for 25 years. When you're done, if you're lucky, they give you a golden watch and then that's it. They put you out to pasture. Yeah. Mm. But then when you start a, a business like this, it's not just a paycheck. It's not just a hobby. Mm -hmm. When you build this, right, you leave, you have something to leave behind for generations to come. Mm. And so my question to you, right, in terms of you taking this as a hobby for your family, what was the aha moment in your mind to actually see the potential to turn the hobby into a full-time business? Yeah. So in, uh, 20, in 2019, uh -huh. uh, we got to a stage where we were scratching our heads wondering we need funding. Okay. Mm -hmm. And there were a number of adverts made, run by government papers mm -hmm. uh, for, for funding. Mm -hmm. So when we tried to apply, we realize, you know, we are talking in uh, millions of dollars. Mm -hmm. We realize when we did the numbers, we, we realized and said, hang on, why are we even bothered with the funding? Why can't we do this ourselves? Wow. So that is when we realize actually, if we put focus and effort in, mm. it shouldn't be an issue. We don't really need funding. So we grow slowly. And as I said, we are in year three. Uh, so we have a 10 year plan up to 2030. And by that time, we expect that our numbers here would have reached so the, the potential at that time would be expected to be slaughtering uh, 700 animals a year. Uh, it's almost 70 animals a month. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that, that, that is the potential. I have to oh tell my you, my God. friend, you're bursting a lot of <laughs> bubbles. There are a lot of warriors out there. They live and die by the excuse, literally. They just sit back and they wait. They think the government is going to come in to rescue them. Mm. The government is going to come and create the jobs. The governors are going to come to create opportunities. But the fact that you saw, you ran the numbers. The numbers didn't make sense, right? There's a saying back home, right? If it doesn't make dollars, it doesn't make sense. So, mm. it's, so it's great that you realized that early on enough for yourself. But instead of getting discouraged, this man here got to work, mm -hmm. right? He took the advice that we always give everybody. You don't need to start big. You can start slow, think big, as long as the plan is in place and you have discipline, you can definitely overcome any obstacle that's put in your way. But the great thing about what you actually are showing the people here, it doesn't matter how small you start, as long as you have a plan, you can definitely get somewhere. In just three years, guys, I'm so impressed mm -hmm. by what I'm seeing here because <laughs> when you come on the ground, the way this place is kept, mm -hmm. you know, it's not about being fancy, it's about being effective. And let me just say this, for someone who is actually running two sites, I don't know how you do how it you're doing because it. you're running one site, mm -hmm. we know how challenging that could be. So kudos to you, kudos to your staff. Thanks. You're doing a fantastic job. So that's all I have to add to this, <laughs> Tina. <laughs> I wanted to ask Mr. Mark about the management. Let's talk about management. You know, this is one of the things our fellow farmers out there face. And we've really preached to them how to handle workers, how to handle animals at the farm. We want also to hear from you. How has it been here at the farm? How do you handle, you know, the have cows you and animals? Disappointments with disappoint your staffing. With the staff, and... with everything. Hmm. Since even you have two sites, hmm. how are you managing all this? Yeah. So definitely that's a challenge. Uh, anything that hand deals with people, mm. people are, you know, uh, 
uh, a bit uh, touchy, people feel different every day, <laughs> so you can't quite judge, a person is not a machine. Exactly. Yeah, so what we found is initially, things were not, as I said, it was more run like a hobby, so things were not done or followed up. We didn't have uh, records, you know, like we have records and uh, it's literally full of uh, writings and, wow. and, and information and numbers and all the treatment. We always, so, we always preach this. Bother. This is so wonderful. <laughs> Thank you so much for sharing that. I'm so sorry. Please continue. Yeah, so we, we decided, we put more effort on, as we got people, we identified those who believed in where we were going and, uh, you know, and so we kept those. Those who couldn't quite fit, we kept uh, moving on, moving on, moving on. So now we have a, a, a team that, uh, that we actually trained. So each one has a speciality. So even the goats, mm. this is the general group. Yeah. We have a breeding group. So different people work in different groups. Um, and we take them through the care of the animals, how to nurse the young ones. Before, our goats' numbers had never reached 200. Wow. Yeah, so given that change and improvement of personnel, uh, and patience is just keep it's more like a rep repetitive activity you keep repeating you keep training you keep repeating and eventually people get to understand so we are get we now have people who, who do the basic things mm. um, and it, it's, it doesn't need too much the most sophisticated things we call on a vet so for example when animals fail have a struggling to deliver mm. say that it's an inbreach or something a breach mm. delivery we call on a vet but other normalities, general management issues, we train the young ones from roots and they develop into managing or supervising groups and then managing. Um, so that's how we do it. Oh my God, that is really so amazing. I know you guys are, are familiar with what he has really said to you guys because we keep preaching to you guys. We've gone to different farmers as well. And as farmers, challenges are almost the same wherever you go. Another thing that I wanted to ask you about, because this is going to be us from some of the people out there, which type of breeds do you have here exactly yeah. for the goats? So the goats, uh, we, we are currently promoting the savanna and boa. Uh, so initially we started with boa and uh, again during the times that things were a bit easy, mm. uh, there was uh, the local breed, the small East African yeah. and then boa. So from that we, we moved on to the 50% uh, boa and we then brought in savannas to then um, uh, breed with the 50% boar. So that's why you're seeing a number of uh, whitish, mm. uh, more white goats. Yeah. But we recently also got in a boar. So we want to promote the two. So savanna and boar oh, is wow. what we are, we, are, we are running here. Wow, that is really amazing. Talk about the genetics, how you are improving it at your farm right yeah. here. So, um, so at the moment we are on uh, on 50 coming to 75 percent of of the savannah and boar uh, we now tend to uh, through again the uh, for, for suppliers we tend to import some of these uh, the, the 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 bucks from south africa because that's when you, we we guarantee that the breed at least is clean it's uh, it's free from disease or anything like that and uh, we are more assured that actually what we are paying for is what we are getting um, so that's what we are doing. Um, but in time, I know the number of uh, uh, farmers coming in with breeding pure mm. breeds, and so that's where we shall also be. Uh, <laughs> that's where we shall also be purchasing from. Yeah. But at the moment, it's uh, we are we are using the imports from South Africa. From South Africa. Mm. Excellent. So guys, I think we're going to move to a different section because we have the goats here. Mm -hmm. We also have the other the yeah, other they're... aspect of what the farm does extremely well. Mm -hmm. So we'll see you guys in a bit. Let's go to the cow. Okay, thank you. Boran, yeah. this is more or less 100. Yeah, because we've had Boran for a long time. If I want to take a few mm. to keep for our breeding program, mm. should we do this or should we do AI instead? Uh, but uh, AI, you can't get Boran. Okay. Mm. Boran, you need a, a bull. Like this bull here. Mm. AI, you can get the others. Is this a good one? If uh, I wanted like two good ones for breeding, mm. 
Which one here would you recommend for someone who's a novice like me? Yeah, like these breeds. You 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 see one with the hump uh, and uh, the testicles and it's uh, long. Uh -huh, like uh, this one. Mm, those That's are a good those, one. those are the ones. That's yeah, a good that, one that here. one is is okay. Uh -huh. uh, what about the red ones? Yes, it it is also. Which it's, one is the best one out of those two? <laughs> so this one is uh, even this one here. This one, yeah. <laughs> so one people bad? people tend to go based on maybe other things like color yeah. or pattern, mm. but they are all generally okay. okay. Now you can just tell probably by the age and weight. Guys, talk about numbers and talk about quality genetics. I'm super super proud of Mark. He has really done it here at this farm. Guys, we've gone to so many farms, but there's something special about this farm, guys. The way they are keeping their cows, the way they are keeping their records, it is just something that is really amazing. I should really say thank you so much. I know most people are going to appreciate this. When you follow what you're supposed to do as a farmer, you don't take farming as a hobby, but you take it as a real business. He is treating this as a business. He has two farms, but he's right here in in Sinjiro, and the other one is in Imbarara. That is like how many kilometers apart? 90. Like 90 kilometers apart. You can imagine how you can manage both farms, but everything is running very good. You can see the bulls behind us, guys. What do you guys think? Hmm? Leave your comments down below, because what I'm seeing right here, I'm super, super impressed. Crofton, what do you have to say about this? Well, number one, thank you very much for having us here, and thank you for actually you know, being true to your word of actually taking this seriously. You know, even though like we hadn't really discussed our methods at length, with, you know, off camera, but you are practicing exactly what we always preach to our, to our fan base, right? Don't go to a farm to make any acquisition where they don't keep records. Mm -hmm. Don't buy from anyone just because they belong to your church or you belong to their church, right? You have to go somewhere where they can actually trace the genetics because the worst thing you can do is spend your hard-earned cash only to find out that you are buying tainted genetics okay there's a reason why you pay a little bit more in life we always say this you get exactly what you pay for if you go cheap you're going to end up spending even more money right mm. so if you're thinking about enhancing your genetics enhancing your breed now the one thing i hope everybody take away from the plan here you decided to go with this specific breed because you were more interested in meat production. That was part of the business plan, the 10 year plan. Many of you guys out there, you actually have the, the hope of actually going into cattle farming itself, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. But then you confuse. Some of you are doing half milk. Some of you are doing <laughs> beef. Some of you are crossing your milk breeds with meat um, genetics. And that's not the way. You need to decide what you want to do. You need to have a plan. You need to stick, you need to be steady and disciplined about how you're going to approach your plan in order for you to reach your ultimate goal. So now, when you first started with this particular breed, there are so many different breeds of cows out there in the world. Why, Why? did you choose this specific breed? Mm -hmm. So this one originates from uh, the East Africa Indian origin. So it's from this area mm -hmm. that the, the Zebu type Boran came mm -hmm. from. Uh, so it's more uh, conversant with the, the challenges, the challenging uh, climate. Uh, and that's why we, we adopted this Zebu type thing with the hump, mm -hmm. uh, the Taurus Adimo, and this is the Boran. Mm -hmm. uh, this Boran, uh, it's well sought out for because the meat tastes different mm -hmm. to any other animal. And indeed, uh, I tend to supply some places in town. We tried opening up a butcher. Mm -hmm. So everyone, when I walk through town, everyone says, oh, the Boran man has come, the Boran <laughs> man has come. So, mm -hmm. so that is the nature of this animal. It, it hardly falls ill. It hardly has problems oh. with eyes. It's hardly, yeah, very hardy and it's always there. Uh, so here, uh, the, the ones that are behind us are the bulls. So we group them into different categories. We have the breeding units. Um, those are about four groups of about, uh, about 120 each. So those have the male and females. Uh, the males, they only have serving bulls, two bulls per group. Um, and then the males, these we, we keep separate so that we don't want inbreeding or wow. 
unnecessary you know things we can't track because every animal you see here has a book and a page so we know when it was born we know which bull served it we know which cow it belongs to um, so when they grow uh, then we sell them or we we'll choose we have a selection of what we keep here to improve further improve what we have yeah, and then we also have the heifers Again, they are different number. You, it might come later, but it's also another group. Another group. And now from those, uh, the ones that are up to two years old, we wait until they are two years old and then we start breeding them. So those heifers remain open. And as I said, we are testing or introducing other breeds. So some of those heifers are taken to our farm in Mbarara, where we do the artificial insemination and then we bring them back here. So that's how we manage this. I have mm. to tell you. <laughs> I, I hope you guys have been taking notes. Mm. I hope you understand when we tell you to go out and find like-minded people. Mm -hmm. The ones that are you gonna keep in your circle. If you have relatives, it could be your brother, your uncle, your cousin, that's trying to keep you in Kampala in a suit and tie behind a desk and you're unhappy, you're unhappy with your life, you're unhappy with yourself, with the way you're progressing in your career, this is proof positive you can make a turn and you can find happiness in your profession. And the happier you are in your profession, the more fulfilled of a life you end up living. The more fulfilled life you live, mm. the happier you end up being. It's better for your wife, it's better for your spouse, it's better for your children. Mm. And most importantly, it's gonna be better for your pocket because mm. you're doing something that you love. And anytime you do something that you love with all your heart, the return, can never be, be, be measured in just financial return, but it's the totality of what you get back. So thank you for doing a fantastic job. Mm -hmm. I hope some of you out there that's mm -hmm. been on the fence, not quite sure which way to go. <laughs> sure. If you're gonna go with goats, with cows, with sheep, with poultry, the most important thing is you have to pick something and you go for it. Mm -hmm. Because 2023 is basically halfway done. And if you're still considering about becoming a farmer, mm. you haven't done anything since the beginning of the year, this is a halfway wake-up call. Mm. So wake up, let's go. So what, what, what you mentioned there, probably mm. something to give an example. Mm. I said I was in the UK for around 13 years. Um, and it wasn't a small job, it was serious. So mm. in the UK, I was earning almost like 30 million a month. Mm -hmm. uh, but I decided to come here. When I did the numbers here, I realized 30 million a month was uh, was peanuts. Wow. So what I thought here, it's not just, and why I decided oh, oh here was because uh, it's not just me. I thought I would also, with farming, there are so many people involved on the farm if you mm. want it to be commercial. And indeed, we at the moment, our staff are around uh, 80, mm. 80 staff and growing. So I thought it, it's not just me. I had the potential to also lift all those that are associated wow. with, with, with us. Bravo. So that is what we intend to do. And that's why I decided and said, now, I tend to get calls, say, oh, please come back and help us do something small. Mm. But I just don't have time. I can't make that mistake. <laughs> yeah. So it's, what you said is correct. Once you get the right thing, it's just not worth You don't turn back. Wow. Yeah. Thank you, my friend. <laughs> Tina, anything um, you want to really add to that? I'm super, super impressed with I just want to reiterate what my friend just said here. Mm -hmm. For those of you that are dying, working six days a week, barely earning a million shillings, which is still money. <laughs> <laughs> this gentleman just expressed to you, when you do the math, when you get back to the soil, you put your hand mm. in the dirt and you definitely get your hands and your eyes and your energy into building your herd. Even 30 million shillings is small, it's minuscule, mm. based on what you build and what you can end up reaping at the end. So that is remarkable. I have nothing else to say. Tina. I really wanted Mark to really advise beginner farmers out there. Do you have anything to say to someone who really thinks, you know, they have the, they have the money, but they want to start? So, yes. So as long as you have the motivation and discipline, as you mentioned earlier, uh, that's, that's what will help you, you know, sit down, understand which area you want to go in instead of doing a lot of many things. Mm -hmm. uh, and... Uh, Put some numbers down to help you understand what space size you need, what type of animal and how long it will take for you to start to see the returns. Um, and just go for it. Yeah, don't hesitate. Uh, as long as you have the structure and the focus and discipline, it's, it must succeed. 
Yeah. Wow. <laughs> this is really more than enough guys we have another episode coming up so that we can definitely share with you guys the profitability so that you can get to know how are we going to benefit from all these animals at the farm but we really appreciate you so much for that inspiring story i know people from the diaspora you've heard from him people who have been hesitant you know you're packing your bags but unpacking thinking that you know africa is a dead zone or maybe farming is for the low life people See, who resigned from the UK, he was in the UK, came back to Uganda. Left America. <laughs> Left America. <laughs> in Korea. <laughs> he I'm is here. in Uganda, mm -hmm. you know, all in the hot sun, as you can see. But we really appreciate you for hosting us here and also sharing this story with everyone out there. Thank you so much. Thank you too. Guys, if you really appreciate him, of course, his contact is going to be in the comments down below. You are going to definitely get in touch with him if you want to do training, if you want to get more information, if you want to buy animals. He is the right person. But I want to make one caveat though. Mm. Though his contact is going to be here. Mm. You know, I, I love my fellow brothers and sisters in the diaspora, especially my fellow Ugandans here. Yeah. A lot of you guys like to call and waste people's time. Mm -hmm. This man is a very busy. We're busy people. So when you reach this guy, please, this gentleman, don't have the time to waste. If you're gonna pick up the phone to call, make sure you have your questions written. Make sure you actually already source out exactly what you wanna talk about. And if you're interested in buying or learning, that's when you actually pick up the phone. Don't just call to get free info, Yeah. okay? Because there's one thing to provide info, that's why we, he's doing right now. Mm -hmm. But in terms of actually making it worth your time and making it worth his while, use his contact when you're ready to get in the game. You understand? When you're ready to make your purchases or you have question about the breed, you're ready to take the next step, you call this guy. He'll be ready to help you. But if you just call him to talk about the flowers and the birds and the bees <laughs> and the dreams about 10 years from now, please let this man do his work because the world needs his talent, okay? So that's all I have to add. Guys, <laughs> I think this is it for this video. Leave your comments down below in case you have any inquiries, any questions as well. I know he'll be watching the video and also answer some of your questions in the comment. So please leave your comments down below in case we missed out on anything that we could have discussed here so that he can definitely get back to you. But we really appreciate you guys so, so much. Please go check out our social media platforms as well. We have Instagram, that is Value Farm, UG, Facebook, Value Farm, TikTok, Value Farm. Go see behind the scenes and also learn something. And do not forget to subscribe, guys. Tell a friend to tell a friend. Till next time. Bye. Bye. <laughs>